All information contained in this podcast is general in nature and does not consider your individual circumstances. You should consider the appropriateness of this information with regards to your individual objectives, financial situation, and needs. Welcome to Sharing More Than The Sheets, a podcast to help you and your partner make better financial and lifestyle decisions so that you can both focus on the things that you love. I'm your host, Michael Curry, financial planner, green thumb, husband, and just dad. You wouldn't be surprised if I told you that credit card debt in Australia at the moment sits around $40 billion. Now that is a lot of money. As an advisor, I regularly talk to clients about obviously money and the advantages and disadvantages of certain scenarios and strategies. One of those strategies, which I regularly come across, is using a credit card to live off. Now, some people do it because they have to, and otherwise they don't have the cash flow there, or they don't feel like they've got the cash flow, I should say, to pay for things. And some people do it by choice because they think it's a smarter way of doing things. And there are some advantages to using a credit card, of course. There's there's the fact that there's money there when you need it. There's the fact that for some people that have a mortgage, for example, you know, they probably have like an offset account and an argument is to use the credit card to live off and have as much cash in the offset account as possible. Um, another advantage is points. People love points. I love points. Yeah, everyone likes something that's free, right? And while some of these advantages are, you know, quite valid ones from a technical perspective, from a practical point of view, there are a lot more disadvantages to using a credit card and you can be the judge. So when I talk about managing money and I'm talking about monitoring your expenses and your income, and I've done so many episodes on the importance of budgeting and managing money. Something which I'll always go on about is being aware of your spending, being aware of what you're spending, being aware of when you hit your, you've hit your limits, being aware of where your money's actually going. And if for the fortnight or the month, you've gone a little bit too far and spent more than you should, identifying that before your account balance is basically nothing. The issue with a credit card is normally the limits on them are quite large. And without a solid an amount of money or a limit of some sort, it's it's too hard to keep track of your spending. Um, yes, you might have an idea as to what your spending is, but it's the ones that fall between the cracks that cause the issues. And it's very, very easy to, to overspend. So my argument there is, yes, using a credit card, you might get yourself an extra thousand bucks worth of gift vouchers in the year because of the points or whatever it may be. And it, by the way, it does help to actually go back and look at what you're actually getting out of it and quantify that, you know, put it in a figure, work out what does using a credit card mean to you from a a benefits point of view? You know, is it a $500 a year? Is it a thousand? Is it $2,000 a year? Work out what the benefit is in dollars and then go back and work out how much you've probably overspent every month because you're using a credit card. You might be very surprised. The other issue as well is when you're using a credit card to live off, most people use it for everything. So from groceries to bills to shopping, eating out, dinner, groceries, petrol, everything. And and the, the issue with that as well is that when you don't have, when you're just using a credit card for everything, you don't have any more structure. So you don't have like a bills account that I've talked about in the past or a spendings account or a savings or an emergency or a holiday account or, or anything like that. Most people just I mean, they'll have some savings accounts, but the structure is the structure is lacking, and there isn't. And when there isn't structure, it makes it very, very hard to plan these things. Um, like you know, what expenses are coming up next month, or in six months, or in a year. And when you don't have structure, it makes it harder. To, you know, it makes it harder to plan, as I said. But it also makes it really hard to manage your financial situation when things are getting really tough, because a trap many people find themselves in is they're having to live off the credit card. They get paid, they pay off the credit card, they've got more, no more savings and they have to live off it again. And that can be a very vicious cycle where you've, you're earning good income, but you've got no cash flow at all. Now, let's be honest, we're all humans. Having a credit card with a large limit or a larger limit to what you'd normally have in savings creates this temptation to overspend. You know, we've all heard that we've all heard that saying. Our parents have probably said it to us that you shouldn't spend money you don't have, and it's true. 
you know, so there's this temptation. There's that, there's that moment of, oh, you know what? I'll put it on the credit card. I'll pay it off next month. But then what happens is something else pops up and sometimes you don't end up paying off what you said you were going to pay off. And then the interest could potentially kick in and that makes it even harder to pay off because the the balance just keeps growing and growing. And that is a very dangerous trap to fall into because if you get into debt and the interest is growing and you don't have enough, ca- enough cash flow to cover it, you're very limited with what your options are. What I see a lot is people would end up consolidating some credit cards, they set up like a personal loan and then they have to get another credit card again because they didn't really fix the, the initial problem of, of budgeting and they've just bandaged the, the issue essentially and they have another credit card with another personal loan or they've consolidated credit cards and it just grows and grows. And don't forget doing these things ruins your credit score. It ruins your credit um, record potentially. And because you're avoiding, you're, you're applying for credit cards. If you're late on a payment, it normally is um, recorded somewhere. And it could, and that could also cause an issue of you potentially getting credit in the future. Like if you wanted to buy a house or buy a second or third property. The other thing as well is credit cards can get a little bit complicated. There, there are the terms which can be complicated as far as, you know, when interest is due, what the fees actually are. Normally they have like a bit of an annual fee um, and some other fees. And the other one is creating a false sense of security. You know, a lot of people feel like, you know what, you know, I don't need savings. I've got a credit card to back me in case something ever happens. And suddenly there's less of a need to have savings. So just subconsciously, you're less likely to save money. Not everyone, obviously, I'm generalizing, but you're a lot less likely to save money if you have a credit card, because you just know if something happens, you've got the credit card. And as I said, if you have more than one credit card, it just creates so many issues and risk of you potentially not being able to manage where things are going. And that's where money can be everywhere. And you've got money coming in, money going out, credit card increasing every month. Yes, you pay it off, but you just there's literally no structure. And we all know when it comes to financial stress and issues with, for example, credit cards, you've got reduced quality of life. You've got the stress that you take into every other part of your life as well. You know, if money's an issue, it normally stresses you out in other parts of your life. It could be your relationship, your um, the relationship you have with you have with workmates, um, and and the other thing is, as I said, it could it could cause more financial damage in the long run as well. To the point where you don't feel confident anymore with money because you you don't feel like you're in control of money. You know, and you could be listening to this, and you could be someone that uses a credit card to live off, and you've had no issues. And you're fine and you feel like, you know, you can't be saving any more money. And if you're listening to this and that's what you're saying, then that's great. And there's a chance that you probably are okay. Like some people, I'd probably say 20% of people that I've met are okay. They can live off a credit card, manage their spending, limit their spending, and they can get by. And financially, they're just as well off as if they didn't have a credit card. Unfortunately, 80% of the time, that isn't the case where that person I know for a fact, and they normally know when I first meet them that they would be much better off if that credit card did not exist to begin with. So I wanted to record this episode because it's a discussion that I found myself having more and more with clients recently. Um, You know, keep in mind, I'm not licensed to give advice on credit. And this is something that you should really seek professional advice on as well when you're really looking at your personal situation to work out, okay, should I take on more credit? Do I need a credit card? And it's very, very important also to understand the pros and cons that I've just went through. And yes, there's great advantages of having a credit card, but in my opinion, there are a lot more disadvantages in having a credit card. But again, you be the judge, you weigh it up. um, And as I said, quantify, work out the benefits, work out the costs, work out the risks and do your own risk analysis. And feel free to pass this on to a friend or a family member that you think would benefit from it. Thanks for joining us on sharing more than the sheets. Please make sure you subscribe to be updated with future episode releases and feel free to share this episode with any friends or family that you think it might benefit. Please visit us at sharingmorethanthesheets.com.au to submit questions or requests for future podcast topics. These podcasts have been brought to you by Better Financial Planning Australia. To book a 15-minute phone chat, visit betterfinancialplanning.com.au.